The Importance of Parental Evangelization by Sarah Levesque. The greatest gift Christian parents can give to their children is to pass on their faith. I suspect this is true of any religion. But today, more and more people are choosing to say something along the lines of, Oh, I don't take my children to church. I want them to be free to choose their own beliefs. To be fair, I'm not sure where I heard this phrase, but fewer and fewer kids seem to be growing up in a religious home. Children learn their first lessons from a parent, particularly lessons about morality, kindness, and truth. Small children tend to mimic their parents, hitting computer buttons, borrowing keys or shoes, making faces, and so much more. If children see their parents praying, helping others, reverently attending services, they will be more likely to grow up doing these things. It is much easier for a loving parent to lead a small child to trust in Jesus than it is for anyone to lead a teenager. As children get older, it's harder for them to change how they look at the world. If they learn to look at the world with relativism, skepticism, and distrust through the eyes of the world, it will be much harder to lead them to Christ unless they are truly seeking. Let's pause here a moment to look back on that idea mentioned earlier. Oh, I don't take my children to church. I want them to be free to choose their own beliefs. What if we use that logic on other topics as a test? I don't teach my children to talk. I want them to be free to choose their own language. Or perhaps, I don't let my children take science. I want them to be free to choose their own beliefs. For a third example, I don't listen to music with my kids. I want them to be free to choose their own music. For a last example, I don't show my kids art. I want them to be free to choose their own style. Let's work backwards and start with that last example. I don't show my kids art. I want them to be free to choose their own style. And yet, how can one choose a style when he hasn't learned any? How could one decide to pull from Monet and Picasso if he has never heard of either, much less studied them? In order to choose whether it is a full style or just one technique, a person must know what the styles and or techniques are. This is also true of religion, which includes art in its liturgy, architecture, and more. The same thing can be said about the example, I don't listen to music with my kids. I want them to be free to choose their own music. Just like the last example, if children don't experience music, they will grow up unable to appreciate the differences and nuances of different styles, instruments, and composers. Being unable to appreciate those, they will likely be easily delighted or baffled by what they hear. They may well be able to learn, but not as easily had they learned when they were children. And neglecting to expose people to beauty is just a shame. Now let's look at our second example. I don't let my children take science. I want them to be free to choose their own beliefs. I do hope that when you heard that phrase, you reacted negatively to it. It would be just as silly to ignore science as it would be to ignore art or music. At least art and music have a subjective side to them. Science is objective. It would be illogical and unhelpful to ignore a child's questions about how the world works but that would be necessary if one were to completely stick to the idea of not allowing children to learn science, despite the facts that science is objective, observable, and all around us. But science is not the only objective truth. If someone decides to be like Lee Strobel and dig for the truth about Christianity, they will find that Jesus of Nazareth was a well-documented historical person who did things that no ordinary human could do and attributed these things to being the Son of God. All the facts back this up. Check out Lee Strobel's book, A Case for Christ, or watch the movie by the same name. Christianity is full of truth, and withholding truth from someone is wrong. Finally, let's look at our first example. I don't teach my children to talk. I want them to be free to choose their own language. Experience tells us that art and music are difficult to learn without some childhood experience. But language is nearly impossible to learn without childhood experience. There have been documented cases of children whose language exposure was so limited to the point where they were unable to communicate well as adults. Religion is how we communicate with God, how we know what he wants of us and how to follow him, 
and how we ask him for help. People who do not learn the importance and truth of religion as children have a tendency to grow up to be adults who have difficulty communicating with God, if they even recognize the need. Most don't know what they're missing. And yet, without religion to ground us, to clarify things and root us in the truth, we are easily blown around by the whims of the world and our own desires, even if they are misguided. In short, when withheld from the true, as exemplified by science, the good, as exemplified by all examples, and the beautiful, as exemplified by art and music, a child's mental growth is stunted and it is only with difficulty that the child can gain that understanding. Religion is also true, good, and beautiful, all in one. Depriving a child of religion is unhelpful, even harmful, even when doing it with the best of intentions. When a parent neglects to teach a child about religion, the true, the good, and the beautiful, the child will learn about the world through the eyes of the world, a world in which tangible things and careers are more important than people. To be vulnerable is to be ridiculed, to love is to be used, where, quote, everything is, where, where, quote, everything might be permitted, but practically nothing is forgiven, end quote, to quote Cardinal Francis George, the late Archbishop of Chicago. The best thing that can be done to counteract these problems of the world is for parents to teach their children the truth about God and what he wants of us and how much they are loved. And the best way to do that is by example, following the truth, pursuing a life conforming to the denomination of Christianity that holds the most truth, and by example, to lead the child to a life of communion with Christ in his church. Every good parent wants what's best for his or her child. For some, allowing the child to choose his own religion seems to be best. But that idea overlooks what religion teaches people. Lessons that are easier learned in childhood than adulthood. Lessons of truth, morality, and reasoning. Lessons about God, mankind, and the world. These are the fundamental things we all need, and it is much easier to build a foundation early on than it is to add a foundation later. But Jesus said, Let the children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Matthew nineteen fourteen. Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. Proverbs 22, 6.